Hey guys, it's Vic and uh, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's Q and A time in May, in the middle of the month, like it's supposed to be, a hundred percent. Don't worry about April. If you want to ask a question for next month's Q and A, feel free to leave one in the comments below. All right, moving on to questions. Akira asks, do I think that all of the weapons will return in the Splatoon 3? Yes. I, I just can't see them taking things away. It doesn't feel right. Like, imagine a person who got really used to duelies in Splatoon 2, which is on the Switch, opening up Splatoon 3, also on the Switch, and no longer having access to those duelies. They're just gonna go and play Splatoon 2. If Nintendo wants to bring people along to the next game, I don't see them getting rid of any particular weapon class, because I feel like it would just, you know, deny people the thing that they're looking for. Also, I want to be able to play Explosher on that one really big map that they've shown us so far, and if I can't, I'll be sad. <laughs> Timberflame asks, Aw, how does it feel to be so loved by the Splatoon community? Hee <laughs> hee. It's, it's pretty nice. I'll keep trying to do my best to make other people happy too, honestly. And how did it feel when I suddenly had more than 60 viewers in your Splatoon streams? Uh, I went very suddenly from having some viewers to, oh, hey, that's quite a few people there, huh? <laughs> and I, I can't really explain the numbers and how that changed because I don't remember really what the numbers were from like before and after the first big jump. But I can surely tell you that it was definitely different. I had to very suddenly make rules to make my streams make sense. Like how I'm constantly trying to change my Sunday fun day streams so they make a little bit of sense and so people have a chance of getting in even though it's not the greatest and goodness I, I wish it was easier and maybe we didn't have to add friend codes which would save time at Nintendo. But uh, I mean it was nice. Uh, the way that I run my streams is I try to bounce off of other people. And honestly having a lot of people there really does help out. So, if you come to those, thank you. Ben asks, if we were to get another junior with a different su it would be Burst Bomb. I don't have to even finish the question. Junior with another sub, it's Burst Bomb. Burst Bomb is the best one. You already know Nintendo's too scared to give them the Burst Bomb. Can you imagine? Junior with Burst Bomb? They hit you a couple times with their gun, you run away from them, and they just insta-kill you with a Burst Bomb like a Tri-Slosher would? It'd be gross. Can we have that? Oh my god, imagine if a junior could just <laughs> just throw like three burst bombs from across the map with their giant ink tank and not even like fight you at all. Terrible. Matthew asks, have you ever gotten your wisdom teeth taken out? Yes. And on two separate occasions. I got to be a cool kid, TM, and get two of them taken out like four years ago. And I got the other two taken out around Thanksgiving last year. So now I have none. Anybody out there who might have this coming up, I can promise you, you'll be okay. The first few days, kinda suck, but after that, it's good. KK asks, imagine what your cat's <laughs> favorite Splatoon weapons would be. Um, if I try to stick to my cat's, like, personality types, personality types, I'm sorry. <laughs> I think, uh, let's give, let's give Ziggy, who's kinda cool, calm, relaxed, but also very suddenly skittish if anything doesn't go his way. I'm giving him like a splash-o-matic. Cause you know, they're always trying to do everything. But then once one thing goes wrong, they, got, they gotta go, they gotta go. Pebbles is a nightmare, aggressive, but also good. Clash Blaster, she gets a Clash Blaster, perfect. Tippy, I feel like is everywhere and anywhere at once in my house. I swear one moment he'll be in my bedroom, the next he'll be sleeping in the basement. I'm like, how did you even, how did you even get here? So you know what, he gets the ink brush because he moves around all the time. That's all I'll do. Pemo Ping asks, honestly, a good question, saying chocolatey or fruity candies. And uh, over the years, <laughs> I've become a huge sucker for the soft, chewy, like Japanese fruit gummies. Like they're like the, the top tier candy. Cause all you need is like a couple of them and you're just you're just so happy. Cause they, they like they last a while, they're good, they taste like fruits, some of which I'm allergic to, so it's nice to taste the fruits, you know? <laughs> Microwave Goods asks question. How would you feel if they brought back attack up and defense up for the sake of chaos? Uh I would not like that. 
<laughs> I feel like you have to have defense up to balance out attack up though. So if one comes back, I feel like both have to come back. Right now, everything is kind of unchecked with the fact we have MPU for some weapons, but no way to stop the MPU weapons besides popping on ink resistance up. So hopefully Nintendo does learn and either brings none of them back or both of them back this time. Come on, Nintendo. You got this. I hope. Bibisau says, question, what if there's a special which is a printer that duplicates the players in your team? Is that like the little duplication cherry thing that's in the Mario games? Because that actually sounds like a lot of fun. I would assume that the duplication thing means that you're still like controlling both of them and maybe it's just like a separate entity that kind of like walks by you and does the same thing for a little while, letting you maybe get like twice the bombs, twice the, the pain on the ground, like, I don't know, twice the shots to fire at opponents. I, I feel like it would have to be very, very short-lived, like not more than five or 10 seconds, or else it'd be probably pretty broken. Hi says, what's your opinion on the flying espresso spawn machines? I love them. They're so cute. I can't wait to see like all the different animations that they might have planned for like the Inklings on there. I know there's already one where like the Inkling comes in and like slam dunks their like slosher when they like come on the thing. And I want to see that like happen for some of the other sloshers too. I'm kind of hoping that they're going to change the animation based on like the gender and the species like they do in Splatoon 2 and also in Splatoon 1. Like there's so many poses that didn't even make it into this game that I, I can't imagine them not making more new ones in the next game. I'm also curious as to like how much control we're gonna have on where we land. I, I know that we probably won't be able to land like anywhere on the map, but I'm wondering if they'll try to make some kind of unique map along the way maybe, where let's say you can kind of just drop on in only at certain places. Like imagine a map where you could only drop in on the peaks of the map or a map where you can only drop in at like the lowest level of the map. I feel like there's so many ways they could make these spawns unique for every single map if they really want to. Charlie asks, how did your family think about you making a YouTube channel and how do they feel about it now? Well, I'm pretty lucky in that my family is cool with the fact that I stream like five or six times a week. Honestly, when I first started doing YouTube, I didn't really tell anybody that I was doing YouTube. I kind of just bought a capture card and had it in the house for like a few weeks with barely using it. Like I, I like I like uploaded like one video of like a tiny clip and I was like, yeah, I did a YouTube. And then I just didn't do very much with it. I would like record myself every once in a while so I could see how I was playing and try to improve. But I really didn't know what I was doing or what I wanted to do. I just kind of had the capture card. I didn't start streaming until 2018 actually. And I remember the first few times I did it, I felt really awkward because I was just kind of streaming on my couch across the room and usually my dad would be like across the other side of the room. My first streams were mostly when either my family was asleep or like grocery shopping. So I would just be alone when I streamed because I was like, oh, this is kind of, <laughs> and I didn't really know what to feel about it at the time. Over time, I realized that my family really didn't mind at all, and now they're very supportive of it because, obviously, they can see that I'm really into it, and I'm glad about that. Mythic asks, what are your top three hero weapons that you like? If we're gonna go based on the kits, I would probably go with the hero splatling, the hero slosher, and the hero splatter shot just because I find those ones the most fun to play. Based on appearance though, I think the Hero Charger is like the sickest one. I think that one looks great. I just, <laughs> yeah, catch me not playing that one. Bubba Nub says, question, high five? There you go. Booyabax says, opinion on hologram concerts, Vocaloid or Splatoon as examples. Uh, when they had that concert for Marina and Pearl a while back, at, like 1 a.m. or whatever, I was up for that one. <laughs> I was really excited to see it. I forget where I was watching it online, but I think the idea of those concerts is really nice because obviously there's no real way to share the music of these games without either selling CDs or creating some kind of way to bring people together to listen to the music. 
I think it's cute. We got like extra animation and bonus dialogue and great interaction between a bunch of the characters that we hadn't really gotten to see before. Like all of Callie and Pearl's like little interactions with each other and stuff. It's just, it's cute. It was good. I would totally be down for them doing more of that in Splatoon 3, especially if we get more idols. Honestly, I, I kind of want to go to one sometime. Photon Jet says, I like how you're always upbeat, even on bad days. Can you tell us how you retain your happy mood so we can try to keep ourselves optimistic? Honestly, I try my best to keep myself looking towards the future, as opposed to like what I'm getting into right now. If I focus too much on like what I'm doing right at this moment, like, oh no, this thing is happening, or oh no, that thing is happening, it can be very easy for like anybody to get super duper upset about what's going on. So I try to center myself with knowing that things will probably be, be fine in the future. Like even if they're kind of like garbage right now, like, oh, in a month from now, I'll be in a different mindset. You know, this thing will be done. It might be better then. Do I know for sure that it'll be better then? No. And does it always turn out to be true? No. But living a constant thought of, oh, it's never going to get better, is not going to help me. And honestly, it's not going to help anybody. It can be difficult to convince yourself, yeah, like, things will get better in the future. But sometimes, you have to just try to be your own biggest cheerleader. Which can be hard. I'm not saying it's easy to do that. And I'm not saying that I am always successful with that all the time. But if you can get there little by little, you can help yourself to be a little bit more optimistic. Do you think that we slaughtered salmonids into an endangered species? <laughs> nice. I, I don't think so. I think that there's probably still plenty of salmon. I know one of the main things about salmon is that they're known to migrate. So I'm thinking, and other people have thought this too, that maybe the salmon are just migrating somewhere else. Like how we're moving to the Splatlands, and maybe we'll just end up crossing paths at some point. I think that'd be interesting. Like, maybe all these Inklings and Octolings living here aren't used to the idea of salmon it as much. And maybe they get off on a better foot because there's no Mr. Grizz saying like, Hey, eggs, go get them. <laughs> Fizzles asks, Mario Golf? Yes. I do plan to get Mario Golf and stream Mario Golf with pals. That is a plan. Sir Crepe asks, what motivates you to play the Squid Game? I want to get better. I want to get better at the Squid Game. I find joy in like learning things for the first time or getting better at things, increasing my mechanics. Like the few times that I remember how to substrafe, like in the moment, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm so good at the game. You know, get a cool triple, you feel cool about yourself. I want to learn what works and what doesn't, and I love seeing other people try as well. That's why it's so fun to like watch tournaments, for example, because everybody has a different way of looking into things, even if it's just a little bit, and you can always glean some kind of information off of watching other people. I think that Splatoon is the kind of game that will always keep growing, which is very motivating because it feels like there's never a true end to it. It's just interesting. Pablo says, do you want Splatoon 1 music again in Splatoon 3, but if it changed, like in the trailer? Yes. Yes. I, yes. I do. <laughs> I do. Oh my god, when when the music started going, pa, 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 I was like, oh, oh. It, it, it just immediately turned my brain to mush. I was like, oh my god, this is actually happening in the game right, right now. I, I would love that. If they do some remixes along with the new music, I think that anybody who owned the first game will be absolutely mind blown. Zemo says, if you could pick one weapon to nerf in Splatoon 3, and why is it Blah Blahber? I don't know. I don't know if they'll nerf Blah Blahber. I feel like Blah Blahber really isn't that bad. It's a niche weapon that's meant to suppress people, and it can't always do its job if there's no one else to help kill for it. I think it's kind of okay where it is. It's very strong in zones. It's good at popping the Rainmaker shield. It's not very good in tower control because unless you're the one on the tower, good luck hitting anybody on the tower with it. And I guess it does its job pretty well in Clam to like keep people away. I would say overall, it's in a good place as is and it doesn't really need a nerf. Ironically, I think if any weapon were to get a nerf, they might like nerf the painting power of random stuff like maybe the Junior. 
I, I hate to say it because I love the junior, but uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if we don't get that 110% ink tank again because it really did make the junior really cracked. And the junior also, despite the fact that it has a pretty high special count, gets armor and any other special that you might have on it just stupid quick. I wouldn't be surprised if in the next game they make it a little harder to get special on Junior, just that so it's not just constantly popping out like 10 armors a match. ESS question, what has been stuck in your head for the longest? When I was making Mr. Sniper, I had Mr. Sandman stuck in my head for like a month because I wrote the song like over a month ago, but I only put out the video a few days ago from when I'm putting out this Q&A. <sighs> I'm so glad that I can slowly start to forget Mr. Sandman. I can promise you it's still stuck in my head right now. Onion says, would you prefer the old Rainmaker shots from Splatoon 1 or the Rainmaker shots that we currently have or a new type of Rainmaker shot? Which one should be added to Splatoon 3? Honestly, as much as I loved the Rainmaker in Splatoon 1 with its giant tornado blast and, <laughs> and the fact that it like, covered everything on the ground, I feel like that might be a little bit overpowered and there's good reason for them not to bring it back. I think what they could do, if they wanted to do something like that, is they could make it more Inkzooka-like in a way. Like maybe a very thin tornado that leaves like a, a path of ink behind as it goes. Because I believe the current Rainmaker doesn't really leave too much to be desired with like an actual paint path because you just kind of blast the shot, maybe it leaves a little turf on the ground? I, I can't visualize it at the second. And then it just explodes over there. If they want like instant gratification and like an instant path, then I feel like finding a hybrid in between with like a thinner Rainmaker shot that leaves paint would be good. DC says, question, would you ever sell your cats? N no. If so, which one? No. You know what? I'm gonna go ask Tippy a question. You. Yeah, you. Wait, wait, it's safe for yourself. It's safe for yourself. Because you're so cute. Yeah. Yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah, you. Okay. <laughs> Brandon says, question. If you could have a casual conversation with any Splatoon character, who would you pick and what topics would you talk about? Uh, Sheldon. I would pick Sheldon that so I could actually learn the mechanics of more Splatoon weapons. Maybe, maybe would I be able to learn like actually how they work? Like maybe, maybe see how they work? Can he like take them apart for me? I think it'd be cool to be able to bring that kind of information back into the real world, so to speak. Even though the Splatoon world is obviously like, you know, created by Nintendo and, you know, I doubt that they've actually planned out exactly how the, the inner mechanisms of the weapons work, but maybe Sheldon would know. It'd be really fun, like, fan material to try to visualize how the weapons work under the surface. Because we only see, like, the finished product and, like, a few of the blueprints. But you gotta wonder, like, how all the other weapons, like, work inside. It just looks super cool. Crystal asks, question. You've got more hours on this game than me. Which map would you say smells the best? <laughs> I, I don't have a real answer for this one. I just picked it because when I saw it, I was like, "Hey," and I'm gonna I'm gonna go with like Skipper Pavilion because I feel like Skipper Pavilion has a decent chance of being somewhere near like a beach, and you can't go wrong with that nice beach smell. Fingers crossed on that one. You know, sometimes YouTube does not help out with these questions either. I got this one here where the bottom <laughs> responses just. <laughs> They asked me if I was sitting in my chair on the ceiling and fall off, do you divide or multiply the alphabet? And I, I wouldn't normally read off a question like this, but at the bottom it just reads, Good question! That's a good idea! Thanks for the tip! There's no tip. So I was, I was really confused. So I'll say, yes, Lank. Yes. Cole says, here's my question. What types of gear would you like to see in Splatoon 3? Honestly, I think it'd be really fun if we could, like, customize our socks. Or, I don't know, add on extra little funky jewelry. Like, you know how some people like to wear, like, a lot of bracelets? Or some people like to have, like, a watch? Or maybe even more options for earrings? Like, things that don't actually add any stats? 
but would allow you to have more control over what your character looks like and give them like their own personality. I think another really fun idea would be to have some sort of pin system in the game. Like maybe for achievements of some sort, you could like get buttons or pins that you could put onto your inkling or onto your inkling's clothes. Even if there's like a limit to how many options there are for like places like, oh, maybe you can only have like three pins on your jacket. That'd be still better than no pins on your jacket. I think that'd be fun. That one random guy says, question, have you ever left a sentence unfinished? Oh. Uh, ah. Uh, well. You know, it is finished. This Q&A. <laughs> Got him. If you want to leave a question for next time, please feel free to in the comments below. I'll finish this off properly by saying thank you for listening. I do apologize, there was not a Q&A last month, but I will make sure there is one next month, as now we're back on track. <laughs> so don't worry, there will be more. I enjoy answering the questions, and I know that you guys like giving the questions. So thank you for being here, and I hope that you have a nice day.